Howdy ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we're going to show you how to put some upper control arms and some lower ball joints on a 2002 Jeep Liberty. So let's get started. Okay guys, we're going to be working on this uh, passenger side of the Jeep here. Like I said, the driver's side, we've already taken care of it. And we've already rolled our little creeper card over here with uh, the tools that we were using. So I'm going to briefly kind of let you know what you might need here. Of course, we've got our impact wrench here. We've got an air ratchet. Uh, we got a 3 8 ratchet here, looks like with a 19 millimeter socket, a pair of needle nose, a uh, big pair of channel locks. We got our half inch breaker bar here. We just dropped something on the ground. Looks like our little short 21, uh, 3 8 drive, 12 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter socket, an extension. That looks like about all we got laying right here. You'll also need a ball joint press as well. We got that laying over in our work cart. So we're going to go ahead and start step by step taking this thing apart. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we went ahead and cut the wheel a little bit to the left to make it a little bit easier. We're going to take our 3 8 air ratchet with a 12 millimeter swivel socket and we're going to back out both of our caliper bolts. Okay, with those two bolts out, we should be able to take our caliper and just kind of lay it aside to get it out of our way. Take our 3 8 air ratchet with a 21 millimeter uh, socket on it and we'll take out our caliper bracket bolts. Now with those bolts removed, we can go ahead and easily remove our caliper bracket with pads and then just grab our rotor and pull it off and lay it out of the way. Okay guys, next thing we'll do is remove this uh, nut that holds the upper ball joint to the knuckle. It takes a 21 millimeter wrench or socket to do that. Also down here on the tie rod end, right here, takes the same size socket, a 21. I'll zip that off of the impact and down here on the very bottom where the lower ball joint is same thing 21 millimeter socket on impact i'll zip that nut off as well so i'm gonna go ahead and do that Okay guys, with all three of those nuts removed, first thing I want to do is get this tie rod in here to uh, unseat from the knuckle. And instead of using a pickle fork on it, I'm just going to try to smack the knuckle with a hammer, okay, until I can free it up, because I don't want to end up tearing up the boot on the uh, tie rod end. Okay, with a few love taps, as you can see, we got that to separate without actually using a pickle fork on it. Now, for this upper and lower, since we're replacing them anyway, I don't care if it tears the boot up. So let me grab the uh, ball joint pickle fork here, and that's another tool that you'll probably need to do this job. And we're gonna drive those in there and pop these joints. Now with the pickle fork wedged in between the uh, knuckle and the lower control arm, we're gonna go ahead and take our hammer, and we're gonna beat the crud out of it until it pops loose. And there she went. So now we can remove our pickle fork. We'll go ahead and install it up here on the uh, upper ball joint and do the same thing. Okay, now with those broken loose, we should be able to pull up on our control arm. As you see, our knuckle just about fell off. And we'll just reach down here with one hand and pull straight up and look there. Knuckle is separated from the vehicle. Okay, to access the bolts that hold that control arm, to the vehicle, you're gonna to have to lift the hood and go through the engine bay area, okay? Right down here, I have my flashlight on a nut and a bolt right there, you see that? It takes an 18 millimeter socket to back that bolt out. You don't have to worry about putting a wrench on the other side, it's got like a little collar that sticks out that wedges up against to keep from turning where you can loosen and tighten it, okay? So get you, you just, I'm gonna use a half inch drive, uh, 18 millimeter short socket, and adapt it down to 3 8 to back that bolt out. And then the other one is a little bit more difficult. We're gonna come over top here to where you can see it, okay? It's right down there. As you can see, my flashlight's pointing right on it. But the way that I'm gonna to get to that is actually through here. I'm gonna go right through here with a long extension to back that bolt out. Same thing that I did on the driver's side. On the driver's side, you have to do that because you have a steering shaft in the way. But you can get an extension through here and you got plenty of room to work right up in front of the en engine with your ratchet, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and back both these bolts out. I probably won't film that process, 
but I'll back them out, pull the bolts out, show you what they look like, and then we'll move on with the project. Hey guys, I want to show you what I was using on this so this will help you out, okay? Uh, 18 millimeter half inch uh, socket on a swivel, okay? And some extensions here built together, and I want to measure this out for you so you'll know exactly how to put one of these together. So from the end of my socket down here, down here we're looking about 18 inches, okay? Almost 18 inches and we've got everything in half inch drive all the way down to where we got our adapter. So once we break it loose, we can zip it out of the air ratchet. So there you go guys, you can put that together. You can reach back there to get the back bolt on the passenger side as well as the driver's side. This will fit in there, this will work. On the front one, it's pretty easy, just a, uh, straight socket and air ratchet or what have you and you can zip it out it's pretty easy on both sides okay guys here's what the bolts look like and the nuts that come out that held the uh, upper control arm in place like i was telling you has like a locking tab built onto it so you don't have to worry about putting a wrench on the other side okay guys hey we got our, nu our knuckle up here just kind of wedged in our cart here we're going to knock this ball joint out all i'm going to do is take a pair of vice grips just to kind of hold on to this uh into this ball joint i'm gonna take a hammer and knock the crap out of it uh there's no um clips or anything on this style of ball joint it's just simply pressed in so we're going to just uh whack it a few good times and hopefully we can knock him out of there she's moving hang on just a minute we almost got it There we go. Okay, so there's your ball joint. Comes out pretty easy. And what we're gonna do now is take a little piece of sandpaper here and clean up all the rust or anything that might be inside this little surface here that's pressed in. We'll take that and clean it up real good. And we'll take a rag with some brake clean and get it nice and squeaky clean before we install our new ball joint. Okay, we got it uh, cleaned up, lubed up a little bit, ready to install our new ball joint, okay? Now, if you'll notice, the new ball joint has a place for a grease fitting here on the side. Now, I looked on the vehicle, I've already decided which way it needs to be turned, and I want to show you guys right quick. If you'll look where your tie rod in is right here, okay? You want it turned, you want to turn this, you want to clock it, you don't want it facing straight out this way because it's right right up against, you won't be able to get to it very easily. You actually want to kind of turn it to where it's kind of in between like this way and this way right here near the tie rod end. So sort of facing the tie rod end, but not all the way over to where you can't get to it. So it's kind of turned out in between, okay? Hopefully that was understandable. Now you want to go ahead and get your uh, ball joint started, okay? And what I like to do is, uh, I'm not going to beat on it, but I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to tap on this joint a little bit, okay, around the edges of it. Don't beat on the middle of the joint. You'll actually distort the inside of the joint, okay? And I want to tap all the way around this joint because my obje object here is to get this thing started nice and straight so that when I put the press on here, it pulls it in nice and straight. I don't want to get it cockeyed because I don't want to end up destroying this joint. This thing's about a $75 ball joint and I don't want to have to buy another one because I messed it up. So I'm gonna tap on this a little bit and work with it. And then we'll show you how we set up the uh, uh, ball joint press. Okay guys, I finally got this thing uh, going in pretty straight. I've been fiddling with it a little bit because I don't really exactly have the correct setup for this type of car. I'd rather have this press turned the other way um, using the cones and everything, but the way this knuckle is made, I uh, just don't have room to do that. So I've got uh, something rigged up here where I'm actually got a solid piece here pressing on the joint and we got a cone here and it's deep enough to where it doesn't mar up the threads on our ball joint. And we're taking our impact wrench and we're just zipping it up slowly. We're keeping an eye on it, making sure it's going on straight. We're about halfway in now. 
and we're just going to keep uh, working with the impact and until we get it all the way down here flush. Okay guys, it looks like we're there. Let me just uh, put my glasses on and double check here. Oh yeah, we're flush. We're all the way down, all the way around. So we're good to go. We can go ahead and back this uh, tool off of here and we'll be ready to Okay, there we go. Our tool's out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and get the um, little grease fitting, and I'm gonna go ahead and install it uh, right now while I got it right here on the bench. And then we'll go ahead and put it back on the... Okay guys, gonna go ahead and grab this uh, knuckle here, carry it on over to the car, and set it in place, okay? So we're gonna set that stud right there in that little hole and she should sit right up there okay now what we're going to do now and i probably won't film this simply going to put this uh castle nut on the bottom of it and i'm going to tighten it down and run the it comes with a new cotter pin i'm going to go ahead and tighten that down put the cotter pin in and then we'll move on to the next step Okay guys, with the castle nut tightened down, cotter pin installed, we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, tie rod in, in the hole, okay? Put it back up in here with the knuckle. We'll grab one of the nuts that come off of there. And we will zip this up with the impact. Okay guys, tie rod in is uh, reinstalled, nut is tightened down. So it's time to uh, install our new upper control arm with ball joint. And we're going to, I don't know if you can see, all you got to do is simply stick it up here and stick it up here, here in those two holes there. And then you got to go up on the other side and fight getting those bolts back in. Now would be a good time to call a friend if you have a friend that can help. But I don't have anybody here today. So I'm going to end up uh, uh, fighting these to get those bolts started back in there on the top. But I'll get it done. I got the other side done. Okay guys, uh, got the bolt started. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. One thing I want to do here before I actually tighten them down is I want to uh, set the height of this uh, control arm to where we don't have, uh, we, we wouldn't, let me just give an example. You wouldn't want to leave it hanging down like that and then tighten the bolts up and then you'd have to force it up. You'd be twisting on those uh, bushings and you'll prematurely wear those bushings out. Okay, and of course you wouldn't want to have it way up here either and tighten it down because um, then it would be forcing it every time it went this way. You want to find kind of a happy median. And a lot of times I, what I do is I pay attention when I take stuff apart as to where it hangs at, okay? And this vehicle actually, they don't exactly uh, hang parallel. Like a lot of times on old Chevrolets and stuff, I'd like to try to get the upper control arm about parallel. But these actually hang down just a little bit, okay? And what I did on the other side, I just kind of stuck my ball joint through the knuckle just a little bit. Uh, not even enough to get the nut on it. And that looks about the angle that they were when I took them off, okay? They're actually angling down just a little bit. So from this point here, I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the bolts. Okay, upper control arm is tightened down on the engine bay side. Getting ready to put our nut here on our upper ball joint, 21 millimeter head. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down and we'll move on. Okay, upper ball joint tightened down. Let's grab our rotor here and we'll go ahead and put him in place. All right, caliper bracket installed. Take our air ratchet once again, tighten these bolts down. Now with the caliper put back in place, we're going to go ahead and put our two 12 millimeter headed bolts in and we will tighten them down and we're getting close to the end here guys, not a whole lot more to do. Okay guys, hey that just about wraps it up, we got that caliper torqued down and we're ready to go. All we got to do is put the uh, wheels on here and uh, go get some grease from the store so we can grease them two new lower ball joints. Guys, I want to thank you for uh, watching our little video today. Hopefully you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, we're on Patreon if you want to support us there. 
Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Take care.